In the center of Anchorage, Alaska, Simon Barnes, a 38-year-old man, sat in his brown leather chair, carefully looking at an old savings ledger. The pages were yellowed, filled with handwritten notes dating back decades. Each entry was a silent witness to his dedication to the art of saving. Since a young age, Simon's passion for money wasn't about what he could buy, but about what he could preserve. His fascination had deep roots, firmly planted by his mother, Margaret. Remember, Simon, Margaret used to say while counting coins on the old wooden kitchen table. Every penny matters. It's not about how much you earn, but how much you save. The memory of his mother brought a smile to Simon's face. He remembered how she would take every leftover penny from grocery shopping and deposit it into a glass jar. At the end of each month, they would together deposit the amount in the bank, and Simon would watch with shining eyes as the cashier counted the coins and updated his ledger. His mother's influence not only shaped his behavior, but also his career. Over the years, he became a renowned financial planner in Anchorage, helping numerous families get back on their feet financially and plan for their futures. This career not only rewarded him with gratitude from his clients, but also significantly contributed to his own savings. On a cold night while sipping whiskey in his home office surrounded by charts and reports, Simon reflected on his journey. He picked up the phone and dialed his sister Clara's number. Hi Clara, I was just thinking about mom and how she taught us to value money. Clara laughed on the other end. She would be so proud of you, Simon. You took her lessons to heart. She always said that money was a tool, not a master. Simon sighed. I just wish she could see where I've come. With a melancholic smile, Simon closed his ledger, took one last sip of his whiskey, and prepared for another day of work in the world of finance. It was his way of honoring his mother's legacy, one penny at a time. On a sunny afternoon, Simon was sitting in his office reviewing some client folders when his cell phone rang. The name Rebecca lit up on the screen, a dear friend from college. With a nostalgic smile, he answered, Simon, it's been a while. How are you? Rebecca's lively voice echoed from the other end. Rebecca, I'm well, busy as always. And you? What have you been up to? I'm doing well, but Simon, I'm calling you for a special reason. I have a friend who desperately needs your help with some financial matters. Can you assist her? Simon hesitated for a moment, but Rebecca's insistence persuaded him. Of course, bring her over. Let's see what I can do. The next day, the office door opened gently and a woman entered. Her brown eyes shone with a mix of hope and concern. Her dark hair fell in soft waves over her shoulders. It was Megan. Rebecca made the introductions. Simon, this is Megan. Megan, Simon is the best in finance. I'm sure he can help you. Megan smiled shyly. It's a pleasure to meet you, Simon. Rebecca speaks highly of your skills. Simon couldn't help but notice Megan's natural charm and beauty. However, he also sensed the urgency in her eyes. Well, Megan, why don't you tell me a bit about what's going on? With a sigh, Megan began to share her story. It's a long saga, Simon. Many of my debts are the result of poor financial decisions made by my parents, and over time I ended up accumulating even more. Simon looked at Megan with compassion. Let's work together and find a solution. Don't worry, you're not alone in this. Megan smiled with relief. Thank you, Simon. I'm grateful for your help. As the days passed, the professional relationship between Simon and Megan deepened, fueled by hours of financial planning, meetings, and inevitably, a growing attraction between them. The time between meetings grew shorter and shorter, and Simon's office conference room became a regular meeting point for the two of them. Initially, it was a place of numbers, charts, and spreadsheets, but over time, the meetings started to include shared coffees, Laughter over personal anecdotes and long conversations about dreams and aspirations. One afternoon after discussing a debt repayment plan, Megan sighed and looked out the window. You know, Simon, I never thought I would find someone who truly cared about my finances. Or about me. Simon, sipping his coffee, replied, Megan, everyone deserves a second chance. And honestly, I feel our connection goes beyond the numbers. Weeks passed and the lines between the professional and the personal began to blur. Park outings, dinners, and movie nights replaced office meetings. The chemistry between them was palpable, 
and what started as a simple financial consultation blossomed into an intense romance. However, not everyone around Simon viewed this relationship favorably. During a lunch, his friend Mark warned him, Simon, you know I love you, but you need to be careful. Megan has a complicated history and you shouldn't let yourself get carried away. Simon, looking thoughtfully at his plate, replied, Mark, I understand your concerns, but I've never felt something as real as what I feel for Megan. I'm willing to take the risk. Simon and Megan's love was evident. Against all odds and warnings, they decided to seal their commitment. In an intimate beachside ceremony, they exchanged vows under a pink-orange sunset sky. At the reception, Megan, with tears in her eyes, made a toast. Many say that love and finances don't mix, but Simon has shown me that with the right person by your side, you can overcome any debt, be it financial or emotional. And Simon, looking deep into Megan's eyes, believed with all his heart that together they could face any challenge that lay ahead, especially because he had the means to help them overcome financial obstacles. After their wedding ceremony, Simon and Megan began building their life together. However, the shadow of Megan's debts was always present. Sitting together in their living room, surrounded by stacks of bills and bank statements, they started planning their financial strategy. Megan, said Simon, adjusting his glasses and looking at the papers, most of our money needs to go toward paying off your debts. If we're strategic, we can overcome this in a few years. Megan, with a lump in her throat, nodded. I know, Simon, it's so embarrassing to have brought this financial baggage into our marriage. I just hope we can live a normal life soon. Simon, holding her hand, said sincerely, We will, dear. For now, I'll manage our finances and give you an allowance. Dollar eight hundred a month should cover your personal expenses. Megan looked at Simon, a bit uncomfortable but understanding the necessity. Okay, Simon, I trust you. However, there was another issue the two of them needed to address. Megan's parents. It was evident that Megan's family's financial history was filled with impulsive and reckless decisions. On a rainy night, Simon, looking thoughtfully out the window, said, Megan, I know this is difficult, but we need to talk about your parents. Megan sighed deeply, feeling the weight of the words that would follow. What do you mean? I've seen them giving you money advice and making loan requests, Simon began cautiously. They have no financial control, spend compulsively, including on gambling, and I fear that if we continue to be financially involved with them this way, our situation will only worsen. Megan, with tears in her eyes, responded, They're my family, Simon, but I also understand your concerns. Simon hugged her. I just want what's best for us. Maybe for a while it's best for us to distance ourselves financially from them. And you, in Megan's shoes, would you accept your husband's suggestion to distance yourself from your parents due to their financial problem? Or do you think he's exaggerating and trying to be controlling? Share your opinion in the comments. With a reluctant nod, Megan agreed, hoping that this decision, though difficult, would lead to a more financially stable future for both her and Simon. Time passed and love blossomed. Megan became pregnant, and with the arrival of Benjamin, with his curious eyes and easy smile, he brought a new dimension to Simon and Megan's world. The small apartment they shared in Anchorage was now filled with childish laughter, scattered toys, and a palpable sense of love. On a sunny morning as Simon cradled Benjamin in his arms, he looked at Megan and said, He has your eyes, you know, and I hope he inherits your passion and energy. Megan smiled, kissing Benjamin's forehead, and I hope he inherits your determination and wisdom. It seems like we have a happy ending, right? We have a couple with a child, balanced finances. Megan learned to manage her finances. Simon managed to pay off his wife's debts. Truly a happy couple. But not everything is as it seems. Behind this facade of family happiness, Megan concealed her addiction and continued to battle her inner demons. In secret, she visited local casinos, trying her luck on slot machines and poker tables. The gleam of the lights and the thrill of gambling were irresistible to her. One day, while Simon was organizing the family's financial documents, he found several loans from dubious lenders in Megan's name. His heart sank. He confronted Megan that night, holding the papers in his hand. Megan, he began, his voice trembling with concern. What is this? Why would you take loans from places like these? Megan, with tear-filled eyes, admitted, 
I thought I could win enough to pay off the debt, Simon. I'm so sorry. Simon, though disappointed, responded with understanding. Megan, we have to face this together. We can't let these lenders take advantage of us. In the following months, Simon worked tirelessly to negotiate with the lenders, consolidate loans, and create a repayment plan. It was a stressful time for the couple, but with determination and joint effort, they managed to reduce Megan's debt to around $10,000. I promise never to let this happen again, Megan whispered one night while Benjamin slept peacefully between them. Simon, holding her hand, nodded hoping that the future held happier and more stable times for their little family. The days went by until one day the golden light of the evening was fading when the phone rang in Simon and Megan's house. The sharp sound broke the peaceful silence of the surroundings. Megan, with a worried look, answered the call. Her face grew pale and her eyes filled with tears as she heard the words on the other end of the line. Megan, what's wrong? Simon asked, approaching her, trying to understand the sudden change in her expression. She took a deep breath before responding, trying to contain her emotions. It's my dad, Simon. He had a stroke. He's in the hospital. Simon, though he had his differences with Megan's parents, quickly enveloped her in a comforting hug. I'm sorry to hear that, dear. In the days that followed, Megan was often absent, spending long hours at the hospital. She was determined to be by her father's side, supporting him in his recovery. Tension between her and Simon grew when he expressed his concerns about the hospital expenses. Megan, he began one night as they sat on the couch. I understand you want to be there for your dad, but we need to be careful with the expenses. We can't afford to sink back into debt. Megan, with burning eyes, replied, Simon, it's my dad. I would do anything for him. He needs me now and I can't turn my back on him. Simon, trying to be understanding, said, I know, Megan, I'm just worried. I don't want us to go back to where we started. Megan's visits to the hospital became routine, and Simon noticed several withdrawals from the bank account that he didn't recognize. He suspected that Megan was financially assisting her parents with the hospital expenses, but wasn't sure how to address the issue without causing more tension between them. Megan, on the other hand, felt torn between her loyalty to her family and her commitment to Simon. She was determined to do whatever it took to help her father, but at the same time, she was aware of the financial implications of her actions. Time passed, and a noticeable change settled into Simon and Megan's home. The usual lively dinner chatter had disappeared, replaced by heavy silences and evasive glances. Megan seemed to be in another world, her thoughts clearly consumed by worries she didn't share with Simon. On a particularly quiet evening, as Megan stared absentmindedly out the window, fingers nervously tapping on the table, Simon decided to break the silence. Megan, you've seemed distant lately. Is there something on your mind that you want to share? She hesitated for a moment, her gaze still fixed on the world outside before sighing softly. It's just... everything that's been going on with my dad. It's been tough, Simon. Simon nodded slowly his eyes seeking hers. I understand, but I've also noticed that you've been spending more time with your parents. More than usual. Does that have something to do with the hospital expenses? Megan looked away, uncomfortable. It's complicated. They need me right now. Weeks passed and the tension between the couple intensified. Megan's frequent meetings with her parents, often without Simon's presence, raised suspicions in his mind. His relationship with Megan's parents was already strained due to previous financial concerns, and he couldn't help but feel that something was happening behind the scenes. Megan, Simon began one night, his voice trembling. I need to know. Is there something going on between you and your parents that I should know about? Something that would affect us? She bit her lip, clearly in conflict. Simon, I'm just trying to help my family. They're going through a tough time. But Simon pressed on fear and distrust evident in his voice. Megan, are you hiding something from me? I'm starting to feel like a stranger in my own home. Megan looked at him, eyes filled with tears. Simon, I never wanted us to come to this point. I just... I just wanted to do what was right. It was evident that there were undisclosed secrets between them, and the trust that had once been the foundation of their relationship was now rapidly crumbling. The days went by and the atmosphere between the couple continued to worsen, until, in the calm of a Sunday afternoon, Simon, sitting on the porch of his house with a steaming cup of tea, 
called Megan to show her something special. She approached curious as he carefully opened his savings ledger, the same one he had cherished since his youth. Megan, he began, his voice trembling with emotion. I want you to see something, something I've built throughout my entire life. Megan's eyes widened as she saw the final number in the ledger. Simon, is this... Is it $500,000? Simon nodded with a smile. Yes, it's the result of years of saving and investing. I wanted you to know because this is a part of our future together. Megan looked stunned, her eyes flicking from the ledger to Simon repeatedly. This is incredible, Simon. I... I don't know what to say. That night, as Megan appeared to be lost in thought, Simon felt a glimmer of hope that his revelation might bring a new closeness between them, perhaps even ease recent tensions. A week after his revelation, Simon woke up on a Tuesday morning and found the empty spot in the bed beside him and a stack of papers on the bedside table. He picked up the first document, and his heart stopped for a moment as he read the word divorce in bold letters. Confused and stunned, he rushed to the office only to find the safe open and empty. The weight of betrayal hit Simon like a ton of bricks. He felt betrayed not only by Megan but by himself for trusting her so blindly. He thought about her words on the porch, the expression on her face when she saw the ledger, and in hindsight realized that maybe he had revealed too much. On that gloomy morning with divorce papers and an empty safe as witnesses, Simon began to understand the depth of Megan's choices and secrets, questioning where things had gone wrong. Simon felt the weight of anguish and betrayal. His ledger had vanished and the safe was empty. He sat in his office, taking deep breaths as his thoughts raced. Then, he remembered the hidden camera he had installed months ago, in an attempt to understand what was happening in the house when he wasn't present. He had always wondered if he was being too paranoid or cautious. But now, he hoped that this decision would bring some clarity. He turned on the computer and accessed the recordings. At first, he saw only normal moments of Megan taking care of the house or talking on the phone. But then, on a rainy afternoon, a shocking scene unfolded before his eyes. Megan was on the living room couch, accompanied by a man he didn't recognize. They exchanged intense looks and laughter. And then, a deep kiss, a clear betrayal. I knew I was right not to trust her, he whispered to himself, tears welling up in his eyes. But the worst was yet to come. On the following night, Megan invited her parents for dinner. Simon fast-forwarded the recording to a moment when the three of them seemed to be in a heated discussion. Simon is a fool, Megan's father exclaimed, laughing. He believes that ledger contains all his wealth. Megan looked from one side to the other, uncertain. I don't know. This seems risky. Megan, think about it. You deserve more than what he's giving you, argued her mother. And with that money, we could change our lives. Isn't that what you want? And I know a place where we can multiply that money quickly, her father added, a covetous gleam in his eyes. Gambling. That will make us rich in no time. Megan sighed, looking conflicted. All right, she agreed hesitantly, but we have to be quick and discreet. Simon paused the recording, feeling as if he had been punched in the stomach. The reality of the betrayal was more painful than he could have ever imagined. However, he now had the evidence he needed to seek justice. After taking a deep breath, he continued with the recording. The room was bathed in soft, yellowish light, with the muffled sound of rain tapping against the closed windows. Megan sat on the couch, nervously glancing at the nearly untouched coffee cup in front of her. Her parents, Marcus and Helena, were on the other side of the room exchanging conspiratorial glances. Marcus, with a low and cautious voice, began the conversation. Megan, we've been observing your situation with Simon. It's unfair that he leaves you with only $800 a month. It seems like he's controlling you, doesn't it? Helena nodded in agreement, her worried eyes fixed on her daughter. Dear, you're entitled to his money just as much as he is. You are married, after all. He's making you out to be the villain in this story, but we know he's hiding something. Megan sighed deeply, her shoulders tensing. Mom, Dad, Simon has been really good to me. He's using his own income to pay off my debts. It's complicated. Marcus raised an eyebrow, a malicious smile forming on his face. Ah, Megan, you're so innocent. 
He may say he's helping, but in reality, he's just accumulating more for himself. He sees you as a means to an end. Helena, always the more subtle manipulator, added gently, Megan, think about the future. Do you really want to be dependent on him forever? Think about us too. We're getting older and we need financial security. Megan looked down, a visible inner struggle in her eyes. She knew in her heart that Simon was doing everything he could to help her, but the pressure from her parents was intense and constant. Marcus, sensing her hesitation, said, If you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for us. We can take that money and finally live comfortably. Simon will never know. Helena agreed, holding Megan's hand firmly. We're your family, and family helps each other. Touched by the emotion of the moment and manipulated by her parents' persuasion, Megan agreed to the plan, and so a sinister scheme was set in motion based on half-truths and illusions. As Simon continued with the recordings, he watched the events unfold. The sun had barely risen on the horizon when Megan and her parents gathered in the living room. A palpable sense of tension and excitement filled the air. The savings passbook, that golden promise of wealth, lay right in front of them, inside the heavy antique safe. Ready? said Marcus, Megan's father, with a triumphant tone as he skillfully opened the safe, a remnant of his past skills. He took the passbook, flipping through it quickly. His face shifted from an expression of anticipation to one of confusion. Where's the money, Megan? The passbook is empty. Helena, with wide eyes, murmured. It can't be. He wouldn't have done this. Megan felt her heart race, a dark foreboding settling in. There must be some explanation. He wouldn't do this to me. As reality set in, frustration and anger escalated. Marcus, with a roar of fury, lifted a heavy bronze figurine and hurled it at the safe, denting it. He deceived us, he shouted. Helena, equally furious, joined him, venting her frustration on the helpless metal. All that effort, all that planning, for nothing. What they didn't know, however, was that Simon had already anticipated this possibility. Not only had he transferred all the money to a secure online account, but he had also discreetly installed cameras in his home, and these cameras captured every moment of Megan and her parents' betrayal and despair. With a sense of determination, Simon grabbed his phone and called the police. I have evidence of an attempted robbery and property destruction, he declared firmly. It didn't take long for the officers to arrive. Armed with clear and incriminating footage, Simon presented his case. However, Megan had acted under pressure from her parents and had already orchestrated the plan. She had left the divorce papers by the bedside and had attempted to open the safe herself. But when she saw her plan had gone awry, she tried to return home to explain herself and call off the divorce. She was unaware that her husband had cameras in his office, and her shocked expression when confronted with the evidence was unforgettable. With a heavy heart, Simon made a difficult decision. He would pursue legal action against the woman he once loved and her parents who had conspired against him. Justice, he believed, needed to be served. The days went by, and in addition to the lawsuit against his wife, there was the divorce process in which Benjamin's custody was awarded to his father. Megan's downfall was swift and devastating. Her once respected and admired image was now tarnished by scandals and betrayals. The first thing to crumble was her job. Her boss, an imposing woman with gray hair and sharp eyes, summoned her to her office with a stern look. Megan, she began, integrity and trust are fundamental to this company. Unfortunately, due to recent circumstances, we can no longer keep you on our team. Megan nodded in silence, tears in her eyes, knowing her career was over. The next few months were a whirlwind of courtrooms, lawyers, and hearings. The pressure was relentless. With the loss of her main source of income and legal expenses piling up, Megan found herself in a tight financial situation. She took three part-time jobs, juggling shifts as a waitress, supermarket cashier, and administrative assistant. Her parents, Marcus and Helena, also faced repercussions. Both elderly and with few skills, found poorly paid jobs at a warehouse and as a janitor, respectively. Meanwhile, Simon found solace in his quiet home, surrounded by the purring of Mealy, his gray-furred cat. He resumed his hobbies, reading and contemplation, seeking meaning in everything that had happened. Little Liam, his energetic and curious nephew, visited him frequently to play with his son Benjamin, bringing laughter and joy into his life. On a rainy afternoon as he watched the drops trickle down the window, 
Simon reflected on recent events. Did I do the right thing? He murmured to himself, his eyes distant. Revenge, he realized, was a double-edged sword. On one hand, he felt that justice had been served, but on the other, he questioned the lasting impact of his decisions on Megan and her parents. Miley jumped onto his lap, interrupting his thoughts. He stroked her head and smiled faintly. Perhaps, he thought, true peace came from letting go and focusing on the present, rather than dwelling on the past and always thinking about his son's future, teaching with the same care and love the knowledge that had been passed down from mother to son, and now he could pass on to Benjamin. And you, what would you have done in Simon's place? Would you seek justice or forgive Megan? Share your opinion in the comments. Don't forget to tune in for the next story. Until next time.